Today's webinar, Equitable Property Value Hub Initiative, is a new exciting offering from Esri. It's a configuration of ArcGIS Hub specifically designed to help governments increase public awareness and access to property information. It's designed to help taxpayers understand their assessment, property tax, and the process as well. It delivers focused information products for taxpayer, taxpayers, real estate professionals, and potential new property owners. In today's webinar, we'll go into a deep dive on how this works, how to get it, and how to set it up. I'm Brent Jones, the Industry Manager for Land Administration here at Esri. Presenting today is Chris Biscaglia. Many of you may know Chris if you've attended the user conference in San Diego or have attended the local government online meetups. He's the lead product engineer on local government land record solutions. This is quite a broad category here at Esri and a lot of things fall under him, including this new offering we're here to talk about today. Here's a summary of today's agenda for the webinar. We'll have a brief discussion of ArcGIS and how ArcGIS enables valuation, public engagement, and parcel management capabilities. And then we'll turn it over to Chris for the deep dive. We like to start the conversation with GIS as the geospatial infrastructure that enables powerful capabilities in your organization and across outside organizations. Everyone needs land information and property characteristics. They are perhaps the most valuable data set in local government and are used as the foundation of many GIS enabled capabilities, including zoning, planning, emergency services, and many other critical functions. This geospatial infrastructure, of course, delivers GIS and mapping, but capabilities for analysis and visualization are available through new applications and apps accessible to everyone. ArcGIS integrates and enables sharing of all types of data as well. In our case, integrating CAMA data with GIS delivers many capabilities. This new op offering, equitable, pro equitable Property Value, gives you the ability to share this data with citizens and taxpayers in an easily deployable solution. ArcGIS delivers value by managing and analyzing land information. This includes the technical mapping of deed descriptions for cadastre and tax systems, but also includes mapping for damage assessment, valuation, offshore, and underground environments as well. Importantly, in addition to the mapping and information management capabilities, ArcGIS in includes applications for scheduling and managing work in the office and in the field. ArcGIS enables three critical systems in land administration, the system of record, the system of insight, and the system of engagement. It's all in a common platform, eliminating the need to manage different systems and to keep them in sync. This eliminates problems associated with the incompatibility of versions in customs, custom and interconnected systems. The common platform or geospatial infrastructure solves this for us. These three systems are the backbone of the work we do. The system of record delivers a complete solution for creating, editing, and managing parcels and cadastral data and maintaining the sur survey record and its history. The system of insight delivers advanced spatial analytical capabilities for calculating value and visualizing valuation model results and understanding and visualizing land value and trends. The system in engagement delivers a secure data sharing system internally with stakeholders and with the public. You can control who you share the data with, what they get, and what they can do with the data. This is extremely powerful. All three systems are interconnected on a single platform. ArcGIS has many analytical tools that helps ass assessors and valuers improve values, visualize value model results, and detect data errors. Advanced analytical capabilities like geographic weighted regression, forest space regression, and machine learning are all available in the familiar ArcGIS user interface. You can easily perform many types of exploratory analysis, test your models, and visualize your results with maps, charts, and graphs that all work together. You can improve field efficiency by scheduling work, optimizing routes, eliminating paper, and have a holistic view of where your work and your field workers are. There's a great book just published by IAAO, the International Association of Assessing Officers, that goes into the use cases 
of GIS for evaluation in great detail, and it's it's available on Amazon. We want to improve efficiency, accuracy, and do a share authoritative parcel data from the source and have one version of the truth. With ArcGIS Pro, you can, can configure your own workflows, although it comes with most of the parcel workflows you probably need. You can eliminate duplicate tasks and have many editors, as many editors working as you'd like. Because it's COTS, there will be standardized training coming. The parcel fabric in ArcGIS Pro is based on web services, which has a lot of benefits in how the platform is designed. Whether you're in the parcel fabric in ArcMap or just want the new capabilities in Pro without any parcel fabric experience, migrating your data and implementing is much easier than in the past. Public engagement is an ongoing, evolving exercise. Just like paper maps and property cards are no longer how the public expects to access data, websites that are hard to use and cumbersome are not well accepted by the public. And of course, everyone expects the data to be current, accurate, and available on mobile devices. Public expectations are a moving target and will continue to move. Maintaining a strong public engagement helps reduce appeals, improve the public's appreciation for your office. This can be done by deploying many config configurable apps and maps. The Equitable Property Value Hub is a modern portal to the public, which is designed to share data and engage the public, taxpayers, and landowners. To summarize, ArcGIS enables and optimizes all critical land administration workflows beginning with data collection in the field, including drones, LIDAR, and photogrammetry, to efficient and secure parcel management workflows, to modeling and analysis for evaluation and visualizing the results for uniformity, compliance, outlier detection, and communicating appropriate data with internal organizations and the public. For each area, robust data management and advanced analytical capabilities and visualization are available. Dashboards and smart mapping are core capabilities here as well. Today, we're going to talk about the public engagement offering, the Equitable Property Hub. But before we pass this over to Chris, I'd like to point out a few resources that will help you keep current and get the most out of your GIS investment. We have a meetup, an informal web meeting where we discuss just about everything about land records. We have one for assessors that focuses on valuation as well. The land records meetup is primarily focused on parcels and the assessors GIS is focused on valuation, modeling, and things done inside the assessor's office. We have some meetups um, on what Chris is gonna talk about. So if you, if you haven't signed up yet, sign up and uh, we'll keep you posted. We also have GeoNet, it's like Facebook for GIS people. Here you can post questions, connect with peers, and get access to a lot of resources. All the meetups are recorded or posted on GeoNet. And, the, and if you are interested in formal training, uh, we have a limitless amount of training tr uh, that uh, you can search and set up your own training plan. It's a pretty advanced training site. Okay, it's all yours, Chris. All right, thanks, Brent. I just want to introduce our new Equitable Property Value Hub initiative, like Brent talked about. Um, before I do that, I just wanted to set a cup, set some context with a few slides uh, and a quote too. So this is from IAAO, and this reads: "The property tax is an important part of any well-balanced revenue system for a community. Um, it's pretty simple, straightforward. But what's important about it is, since property tax dollars are distributed to many programs and services that citizens use every day." Um, it's really important to talk about that when we when we show the site, um, and, and it's something that it's a theme that just kind of continues through uh, the site when I, when, I, when I show it. All right, so what will this new initiative help you with? Well, it's designed to increase public awareness and access to property information. We talked about that a little bit. Uh, help taxpayers understand their property tax assessment and property tax bill. Uh, provide focused property information for the taxpayer, but also other user personas. And I'll talk about this when I show the site as well. So imagine real estate professionals coming to the site, uh, title professionals and companies, maybe even new property owners that are looking at property um, uh, to, to purchase. 
Also simplify outreach through focused events. Imagine if the assessor has meet the assessor day or there's, brown, there's a brown bag luncheon or there's some uh, very focused property tax workshops within uh, the city or county. Um, simplify that outreach and, and, and kind of ease that process. Also deliver a very simple and easy way to respond to appeals uh, while educating the taxpayer. So not only am I upset about the property, uh, you know, my property tax um, bill maybe, but uh, educate them on how that process works, how the value is actually established for a particular property, um, and that's part of the site as well. And also something you can turn on or off as part of the appeal process. So if you don't want that capability turned on for certain times, you can, you can turn it off. It's also delivered as a integrated, uh, fully SaaS offering. So all of the things you, you see listed on here are delivered in um, uh, as a fully hosted solution. So here's all the different components of the site that I'll show you. But we have a very simple tax parcel viewer. Uh, there's a residential comp finder configured as part of the initiative. There's a very simple application to help you review where your tax dollars are actually being spent or distributed through a, a solution called My Tax Distribution. There's a very simple property tax assessment appeal application, like I mentioned already, and this can be turned on or off depending on the time of the year. Uh, there's a very simple application to help you uh, understand the impact of flooding or floodplain boundaries uh, within uh, your community, so I'll show that. And then we actually wrap all of these solutions with a nice uh, landing uh, initiative page. And we're calling that, like it's been mentioned a few times before, the Equitable Property Value Hub site. Um, and we'll talk about that too. So uh, this is just a different view of that same information, but this gets to those user personas I talked about. So at the bottom left of the screen, you actually see your authoritative property data feeding the system. So you, uh, tax parcel data, sales, foreclosures, appeals, and even tax distribution data that might be coming from um, tax collection or tax billing, feeding this larger system of solutions. Um, you're seeing those same ones listed here, floodplain inquiry, residential comp finder. But in addition to that, we're actually showing kind of the user persona that solution's targeted to. So for instance, on the property tax assessment appeal app, that's gonna be focused on the property owner, maybe the real estate professional that's helping or even an agent that's representing that property owner. Uh, but then something like the um, tax parcel viewers focused on all the user personas. So the property owner, I wanna get information about my tax parcel. Uh, the real estate professional is looking at properties maybe for sale uh, on, on behalf of a, of a potential property owner. Maybe it's an agent that's reviewing information about uh, values around a certain property. Um, and even a title professional that needs to do some deed research. So just keep that in mind when you view the site, even though it's a kind of a citizen engagement initiative, it's also uh, serving these other user personas. And just wanted to make that, make that point with this slide. So I'm gonna, without further ado, I'll just jump out to the, to the initiative and show you how it works. So we'll go ahead and switch over to it. Um, and just to, just to let you know, this initiative will be available in early February. Um, it's not available currently in ArcGIS, but we can talk about that too at the end. Um, but this is the Equitable Property Value Initiative site. Um, the first part of the site really explains where your property tax dollars are going, um, what they're used for. So for instance, they could be funding infrastructure projects, uh, public safety, and other services. And this could be a, uh, you know, this could be customized as well to kind of talk about, to tell your story about where property tax dollars are going. Um, the second part of the site's real property by the numbers, so it's talking about the total, in, you know, total amount of parcels the county actually maintains, how many of those are single-family homes and even condominiums, um, maybe how many parcels are used for commercial uh, use, green space, and then. The big number here is the total assessed value of all those properties combined. Um, so it's a, just a way of kind of showing overall the, in, the information that the, that the jurisdiction has to maintain. The next part of the site's really, again, uh, an area where you can tell your story about how you value property. So what is the process for property valuation? How to, how to use a taxpayer to participate in that process? And how does that ultimately impact your tax bill. So again, this really isn't about taxation per se, it's about valuation, 
but we do allude to um, property tax, obviously, because a lot of citizens are concerned about that. But this is just a way that you can talk talk about and tell your story about property valuation. And the learn more button here is designed to take you to a very focused story map to tell that story. So this is an area where you'll want to configure the site um, to tell that story. You might already have uh, a page on your current site too that you can link to through the learn more button that talks about that property valuation process. Um, the next section of the site is all about buying new property. So imagine if you're a potential um, property owner within a, a community and you want to know um, how much a new sale will impact the value for that property and even the tax liability for that property. So as a real estate agent or a potential property owner, I could go in here and type in the sale price or the price that you know I'm looking I'm looking to purchase a property for this price. What's the estimated assessed value based on the target um, sales ratio quotient? Um, but this also can be customized depending on where you are in the country. And then the estimated tax per year based on that estimated assessed value. So it's giving the potential property owner some information about what the tax liability may be. Uh, one of the things that you're going to also want to do is configure things like uh, exemptions into this section. So this is another area where you, you're going to need to go and configure the initiative to take it take into account those things um, as well. But it's giving you a good baseline way of delivering a very simple tax liability calculator right in the right in the site. Um, the next section of the site um, is really about integrating those other solutions I mentioned during the PowerPoint presentation. So how do I give people some very high level information, but then let them dig into very focused information products? So one of those is our res residential comp finder. Another one is our floodplain inquiry application I mentioned, a very simple tax parcel viewer. Um, and that's designed again for the general public. Um, could be a taxpayer, could be a potential property owner, could be a real estate agent, title company, all of the above. And then we also have a very simple focused solution for viewing where my property tax dollars are being distributed through the my tax distribution solution. And what I'm going to do quickly is just give you a demonstration of those solutions so you can get a feel for what they are. Also, just note that this section of, this, of the site is designed to be configurable. So if you have existing, um, let's just say as an example, your property record card app on your site, you could integrate it into this property application section as well. So keep that in mind. This is not the end all be all of the solutions that are, um, that are in the site. You can always extend this um, section as well. So we'll start with the residential comp finder um, and I can kind of play the role of maybe somebody who is looking to appeal property value and wants to get an understanding of surrounding sales information to see kind of where my property fits in with those. So what I can do is simply click on the map. Uh, I'll go ahead and use my picker button. I can click a location or I can type an address in. And what that's gonna do uh, automatically is search within a certain distance around that location. All of, It's gonna bring in all the sales data that, it, that, that we brought into the app. And then I can go in and say, well, I want to filter this down further. And I'm, maybe I'm looking for sales within a certain range. Maybe I'm looking for structures built within a certain date range or year range. Maybe I'm even looking for certain structures like the one that um, I'm trying to compare it to. So if it's a, you know, a bungalow or a Cape Cod style structure, we're even bringing in the structure information into this filter. And then I could even filter within certain sales dates. So I can say, look, give me everything within the, you know, the previous three months or six months or a year. And I could even do things like filter it down by the floor area. And what it's gonna do then, if I go back to my list, is give me a now filtered down list based on those characteristics. So it's a very simple way of viewing that information. And it's also giving me some information, it's kind of going a step further and saying for that particular sale, let's compare that to our target sales ratio. In this case, it's a 33% target sales ratio. And this one is 36. So it's right around the cusp of on target. And the likelihood that that sale could impact the property tax levied is actually low in this case. Um, so it's doing a little bit more. We're using some arcade in the pop-up here to kind of give you some more information, some more insight into that particular sale if you wanted to dig that deep. Um, 
So that's the residential comp finder. The other solution that we had on that page was the uh, floodplain inquiry app. And again, very simple interface. There's actually not a lot going on in this application and it's designed that way. But what I can do is go in here, um, type in an address, or I could just click on a parcel on the map and uh, if I know where it is. And what it's gonna do is take that parcel, intersect it with the flood zone information, and then tell me if it's in the flood zone or not. Uh, yes or no, basically, is that first part. So this parcel appears to be in a flood zone. And if you notice, only a portion of it is actually in the flood zone, but it's still reporting that information to me. It's giving me the parcel information, the address, the site address of the, of the parcel, what flood zone it's in or intersects, and then the firm panel that I can go out to FEMA with to go get the actual authoritative um, firm panel ID. And it's even bringing in some information about uh, the, um, the chance of flooding based on the, the FEMA flood zone. If I click on a parcel outside the flood zone, it's going to be another pop-up that's very simple. It just says, this parcel does not appear to be in a known flood zone, and then giving me some general property or parcel characteristics. So very simple. And this, um, yeah, this site is, is designed that way. Uh, so somebody could just go in here and type a parcel number in or an address and get some very simple information about the flood zone. Uh, moving over to our tax parcel viewer, again, designed for the general public. It's, this is not an internal uh, to your organization's tax parcel viewer. This is a general uh, public version of it. And I could go in again, very simply, type in an address or a parcel number if I know it. And if it finds a parcel that meets the the search, it's going to display it automatically for me. It's going to give me the address information right up front, the owner name, the tax district, the school district, the use description, very simple property characteristics, the assessed value, the land value, and then even give me the tax distribution breakdown. So I mentioned earlier that we have a tax distribution solution. This actually utilizes the same um, underlying tech to display the um, the tax breakdown in the, on, on the parcel as well. So in this case, the bulk of the money is going to the bulk of the tax distributions going to the grade school. And then further on the list, you see the other um, tax distributions. Um, so again, very simple, straightforward, standard property characteristics, and then the tax breakdown. And then uh, finally, I'll just show you the tax distribution app. So if you want an even more focused experience for somebody who just wants to know where their property tax dollars are going, you can configure the my tax distribution solution. Same thing, type type an address in or parcel number. This is the same property. It's gonna select that on the map and then give me a very focused pop-up with just the parcel number and the tax distribution or breakdown. So if you just wanted to get this out there for taxpayers to understand their property tax um, bill, you can do that through a very simple version um, called my tax distribution. So those are the those are the main uh, applications configured with the site. And again, like I mentioned, this section can be extended to support uh, whatever you want. So if you want to have your property record card in here still to get all the property characteristics, you can do that um, as well. That's, that's extend, extendable um, as part of the site. The next section is about open data. So if you do want to expose certain themes of information through the site, in this case, I picked the ones that make more sense for um, this particular initiative. So I have parcel information, sales data, I have foreclosures even in appeals or protests. If you wanted to publish those to show people where where those are happening, you can do that. Uh, these themes, again, are configurable. You can simply tag um, certain layers in your organization with the tag that this section reads, and then they show up. So it's pretty simple to do. And then we have this whole section around community events. So these are those outreach events, like I mentioned earlier. We have in here property tax workshops that are happening. Uh, we have meet the meet the county assessor brown bag luncheon. Um, we ha even put in here the tax sale auction. So that's actually um, something that you could also link off to. It's not necessarily tied particularly to valuation, but properties available for sale if you want to market those properties through the events section of the site. And you may have multiple property tax workshops, right, depending on where you are. Um, and those can also be um, duplicated in here for when they're going to happen next. And you can also subscribe to these as a taxpayer, which is pretty cool. So I can say I want to get notifications of when these things are happening. Um, it'll shoot off an email um, to those folks so they can be uh, be aware of the of the events that are happening. 
the last part of the site is really about getting involved, so you can you can actually follow, uh, like I mentioned, to get notifications, and then you can contact the assessor. So if you still don't under you know you've you've gone through the site, you got all the information you you know that that um, the site provides, but I still have questions. You can contact the assessor directly through email or phone, or uh, this is that section that I talked about that can be turned on or off depending on the time of the process, but you can actually start the appeal process directly through the initiative site if you, if you choose to do so. So if I click on apply, it's gonna launch our property tax assessment appeal application, um, and it's gonna ask you for very simple information about the property. Um, do you own um, the property and occupy it? What's the parcel number if you know it? If you don't know it, um, it's not gonna prompt you for it. If you, if you do know your parcel number, it's gonna ask you for it. Um, how would you best describe the property, um, single family, and then at the end, the reason for the appeal. So maybe there has been a decline in property value. Maybe you, maybe you lost an improvement. So maybe the, you know, you demolished a structure on the property. If I choose that, it's going to ask me what type of structure I actually lost. So in this case, it could have been a accessory structure or an ADU. And maybe I'm the applicant myself, or if you're in a jurisdiction that allows agents to also appeal on your behalf, um, you can type, you can click that you're an agent or an attorney and then type in your contact information. And at the end, sign it and then submit. And this doesn't necessarily replace any existing appeal process that you have, but this would replace like a paper form that somebody would use to start the appeal process. Um, and that's the, that's the, um, uh, the reason why we we have it as a solution. So I go back to the site, and that's pretty much it. At the bottom of the site just has a quick little banner that shows you how to um, get in touch with the assessor again, and also the the social media channels if you allow them. Uh, you can click on those as well. Uh, so that's the site. Uh, one of the things we also do um, is give you a quick guide to configure this site. So in addition to the site. Uh, in the initiative that you can deploy, we also give you an instruction manual and a getting started guide to configure it. So the things that I mentioned about um, hooking up, you know, your story map to the learn more button as an example will be covered. Um, how to get your dynamic uh, layer, your tax parcel layer hooked up to the site. So everything's configured in like this, uh, this section about property by the numbers. Um, the applications that are configured as part of the initiative, we have some quick getting started guides about making sure things are tagged correctly so they show up on this section. So all that will be uh, delivered with the site as well. All right, so we'll go back to the PowerPoint briefly. And just to kind of recap what I showed, so what you get when you deploy the equitable property value initiative is a fully SaaS offering that leverages your authoritative location-based data, in this case, parcel data, sales data, foreclosure data, et cetera. Uh, it comes with an ArcGIS subscription. Um, implementation and enablement activities, I did mention that, so yeah, the help guides, the getting started information is all included. Um, uh, yeah, it's all part of the initiative. And then support, since it is just an ArcGIS solution, we support them through our technical support. So if you have questions, you can contact support. And I guess just in closing, why is it important? You know, I mentioned that local property tax do dollars are vital. It's something IWAO mentioned in their quote, and they fund, you know, local programs and services. Uh, this initiative provides a modern way to share property information and sales data with interested folks. And then, you know, like I mentioned before, those different user personas are presented here. So the real estate community, taxpayers, title insurers, even potential property owners. And there's more to come on that too. We're doing some other work there as well. That's pretty exciting. Um, be transparent about public engagement um, to, you know, hopefully increase taxpayer satisfaction. Um, and then improve outreach through those events, like I mentioned. So lo location-based data and technology to improve that. Also just publish those events on the, on the initiative site. And Brent, did you want to talk briefly about um, kind of how you get it? Sure, thanks. The uh... Well, we have several business partners that can implement this. Uh, it's really tough because it's not really on the street yet. It's got another couple of weeks or so. The uh, but we had this webinar scheduled. We didn't want to we didn't want to interrupt it because the uh, so many people had already signed up. 
and you go to this site and sign up and and that's about it so the uh hit that site i'll paste it in the window as well so you don't have to type it in if you don't want to um, so if you wanted all the links that we've had um, they've been pasted in the chat window so check those out um, and i've been answering questions too the uh, uh you ready for some questions chris yeah let's do it okay okay i answered the easy ones of course the uh, <laughs> the um can pop-ups be conf i think it's a cots pop-ups configuration for display for displaying flood zones for parcels that intersect multiple zones i don't quite fully understand that question mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it can. So uh, I think the question is probably around the floodplain inquiry application. That just uses some arcade to display any of the intersecting layers. Um, so you can display those kind of in a loop. So they, it would be, you know, flood zone A, flood zone B, flood zone C, and then give you the information about each one. Um, you can definitely do that with arcade, and it's configured as part of the pop-up configuration. If you deploy that solution like the way it is right now, you can see how that's happening um and then modify it to take into account additional layers that you may want in there so if you want like the school district and the flood zone you can do that or just how to loop through an ex like one layer and display multiple intersecting polygons um yeah so it's definitely supported and we can help you with that okay, so uh, cool. one, one way to one way to get help if you need it is that floodplain inquiry application is fully supported through support. So you can just call technical support and they should be able to help you configure that pop-up. The other way to do it is just kind of start a discussion on GeoNet and we can respond to it. But I think technical support is probably your best bet for that one. Yeah, I think that's actually a pretty important point. This is a, uh, this isn't a one-off thing we're throwing out there. This is a, uh, a full solution that will be supported and mm -hmm. updated and expanded over time. Um, here, this is a good question here. Um, and I, I've got a, a follow-up uh will there be overlays for breakout areas that are specifically assessed as farm and forest programs and i replied you know if there are maps that exist we can we can embed those web maps um but so the follow-up is there's no maps currently aware uh, that she's aware of uh, but we could look in the the camera data to see if there's a special assessment put that on a map we could have part of the site also contain information regarding farmland assessments and forest land assessments as well and have its own category uh, for public information on that. Uh, you, you probably know a bit more about that than I do, Chris. Well, I was just going to say that we sort of allude to that a little, if I go back to the site just real briefly, uh, one of the things we allude to in the property by the numbers is uh, like, for instance, commercial and green space properties, but that could be ag properties right so you could configure even this section to talk to tell part of that story maybe the rest of that story even shows up in the how we value property section so maybe we have a very focused story map even to talk through you know how ag lands valued um, and then associated maps to show you where those special assessments may be um, something like that yeah and for, and for those that aren't familiar with story maps it's a convenient way to um, to have kind of a step through discussion kind of like a website but you can have some maps and other text embedded in there they're uh they're also sas they're part of the sas solution here and they're uh they're, they come as as part of this package uh, and they're pretty easy to do um and if you've not played um uh scrolled around the the gallery uh of story maps i think it's storymaps.esri.com and go to the gallery you can get lost in there it's like there's some really there's some really fun <laughs> ones out there yeah, and, and one of the other things too, Brent, I'll mention is that I, I did, I talked quite a bit about this button on the site, uh, the learn more button, but there will be an example story map as well that'll be configured as part of this experience. You can kind of play around with it and see what we did as an example, but then take it a step further and, and configure it for your own. Yeah, and it's important to note that this is a framework, kind of a, a, uh, a portal for putting all the information that you want to put out there different maps different apps if you have maps of your own uh that you'd like to put out there they can be you know put on this site as well um here's a here's a good question uh, and you're the right guy for this one do you have instructions on joining the current camera system that we employ 
all the assessment information is main, maintained in that system. So, so essentially, the uh, uh, there's an ETL system, a way to extract, transform, and load your data that we can pick up. And there's also services-based integrations. And they're different, a little bit different for each type of camera system. Uh, you might want to expand on that a bit, Chris. Yeah, yeah, I will. Um, one of the very, I, I guess there's, yeah, there's different ways to do it, Brent. Um, one of the patterns that we document is joining your camera information to a tax parcel layer and then loading it into the layer that's used by, as an example, this entire site. So like this, this whole section here is actually derived from the camera characteristics, right? It's using the use code on the parcel to tell you if it's a um, commercial property, a green space property, um, park, ag, open space, et cetera, townhome or multi-use. So it's actually using characteristics from your camera data. We actually document a load data task that you get when you deploy the solution so that you can actually load in your content into that layer. So that's one pattern, and that's an ETL pattern like Brent mentioned. Um, loading your content into a hosted layer that, that, that then can be used by the site. Um, there are other ways to do it uh, through database views and other things, um, or a services-based um, you know, assembling, but uh, the ETL pattern is the one that we see most common and it's the one that we document on our site. Um, so one of the things I didn't mention is the solutions site, uh, solutions.arcgis.com. Yeah, I'll paste that in. Yeah, and if you go to that site and you, let's just say you want to deploy the tax parcel viewer, it deploys a tax parcel layer that assumes that you have all that camera data. So we actually document a load data task to map your data over to that layer. Um, so that'd be one way to to quickly go and explore that process and see what best works for you. You can also schedule that process, right? If you have to update that layer once a week or once a month, uh, that's another important piece. Um, there's also some really nice tools in ArcGIS Online now that allow you to load data. Um, and it does field mapping as well. So tell me where the taxable value field is in your content. Tell me where the use code field is in your data. And then it just maps it over for you. Um, and we can probably do, Brent, that'd be a good, discussion topic for another meetup as well. We can think about doing something just specifically on on that process. Yeah, that would be good. And um, Robert, for that question, um, you can let me know what camera system you have and maybe we'll use that exact camera system for uh, for, for discussion on the uh, on the meetup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so Chris, you got a yes with an exclamation mark on the, uh, on that last time. Oh, okay. I guess <laughs> yeah, we're on the do hook it. for doing that meetup. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, so the uh, here's here's a uh, this all, always comes down to this one. Um, can you give us a rough idea of the cost? And and uh, so first off, we can give you a hard cost on on the technology. Second off, um, we have several uh, partners that can do this implementation, so it doesn't have to be us that does it. So do you want to talk about the cost, Chris? Uh, well, it requires Hub Premium. Um, that that is definitely the requirement for the initiative. So with Hub Premium, you get a series of templates that you can deploy, and that's what you're getting with this particular site. Um, I guess the best recommendation that I would have is contact your local account manager and then get them to quote you on Hub Premium, which is the product that's required. Now, is there um, additional cost to Hub to no. Hub Premium? So no. if you have Hub Premium, you're all set. Correct. Okay. And the initiative itself, like Brent mentioned, it's going to be released in the first part of February. Um, you won't see that until we release it. So if you do want to take a look at it before then, please contact your account rep. Um, and then uh, then we can get a demo set up and we can show you the site. But um, it will be coming very, very soon. Um, yeah. And that's that's what I'll say on that. But yeah, I think for specific pricing, um, just contact your your account rep. But it's Hub Premium is the is the requirement. Okay, uh, I can take this one. What is CAMA? That's Computer Assisted Mass Appraisal. They're valuation systems that most uh, uh, most U.S. jurisdictions use for uh, valuing property. Now the uh, I'll dig up this information and paste it in the window, but I'd like you to talk to this one, Chris, because um, I know this is your app as well. 
Uh, is there more information on the residential comp finder? It seems like a very useful tool. Yeah, and I, there, I agree. It's quite useful. But I'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, the, uh, the up. yeah, so we have, uh, there's been quite a few uh, implementations that we've seen, public versions of the comp finder, but we've also seen a lot of folks use it uh, internally within their organization. So the assessors, the actual like appraisers are using it to, to find properties um, that are comp properties. So that's another use of the application. Um, what I'll do just briefly is I'll go out to the solution site because I want to show you guys that anyways. So we'll go to solutions.arcgis.com, which is where you get all those individual um, solutions that we mentioned. Yeah, and that's pasted okay. in the window. Okay, and I, hopefully you can see it on the screen. Yep. Okay, uh, if we go into local government and then we dig into land records, which is the stuff we're talking about today, um, and we have a whole area about engaging the public. If you click on learn more, uh, you can actually deploy the residential comp finder directly through the site. So if you go to the, you can view the application, it'll give you a try live experience, which you which you saw already. Um, and you can also learn more and go through the process of deploying it yourself. So we have a getting started guide. We talk about the requirements. In this case, to deploy it, we actually deploy all of our solutions through the solutions deployment tool inside of Pro. So if you have ArcGIS Pro, you can just deploy the entire application. It'll deploy the feature layers, the map, the application, and the baseline configuration for you. You don't have to do anything else. All you have to do is load your data. Um, so that that's that's what you what you can do to deploy it. And we have a quick uh, help topic about uh, deploying it, configuring it, and then loading your content. And I mentioned that before. So this is the same workflow for loading data that you would do if you had camera information that you needed to join to parcels or in the case of the residential comp finder it's relying heavily on your sales points your sales data so you'll have to load that information in as well and this whole help guide steps you through that process so i think that uh first step would be to go and deploy the app and then explore the layers that are required and then load some content and play around with it that'd be the best way to go And the same goes for Tax Parcel Viewer and My Tax Distribution and that floodplain inquiry app as well. Okay. Does that cover it, Brent? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, I don't know if this helps. The, uh, they use MVP Harris for the camera system on that previous camera question. I think that's an older system and would, would use an ETL. If yeah, I yeah, yeah, just use that. the... It'd be a it'd be a pretty uh, straightforward uh, workflow, but we would want to probably you know talk about it. But uh, this load data help topic will help you with that, um, which is yeah, essentially get, give that. me an extract from the camera data and then load it in. That's that's essentially what we're we're talking about at a high level. Can you find a link for that help file? I couldn't. I did a quick search, but I was busy answering other questions here. Yeah. If that's if that's easy to do. Sure. All right. So we're running out of questions. If we had, I pasted a lot of links in the window. So hopefully you guys um, uh, can pick up those if if you're interested. And while Chris searches for the uh, uh, for the link, uh, would these solutions cost anything extra to, to deploy? Uh, that's no. The um, these solutions are uh, they they come part. Uh, if you're an ArcGIS user and you have the ArcGIS infrastructure, the platform, these apps uh, are free. Many of these apps uh, are open source. So if you don't quite like the way they look or feel, uh, you can monkey with them uh, yourself as well. So do we currently integrate with ProVal? I think ProVal is also an ETL integration that we do. Uh, who is the MVP person? I can also assist use that camera maybe we can assist on the next demo okay so mark the um i'll i'll take your name down on this for sure maybe we get to you know we get a couple of users on here to step through these yeah uh, these, we can we can processes. cover the it's it's a good it's a good plan like we can cover the different patterns um you know extract pattern and a load pattern and a Maybe a services one, if that's something we can do. Yeah. Yeah, and if, and if we lose track of you guys, um, my email is bjones at esri .com. Super easy. So you know, I'm available to take your questions anytime. Usually, I'll send them to somebody like Chris, but the uh, my email is wicked easy to remember. 
Uh, do we integrate with uh, Patriot Assess Pro? Now, Patriot is a is a more modern um, camera system that does publish services. So I do believe there are services integration um, with with Patriot Assess Pro. So that's a uh, that, that's a newer one that kind of connects with modern technology. And if you're not familiar with services, web services, um, that's kind of how all these apps work. These apps right on top of these web services to operate. Okay, so um, pull that screen back up, would you, just for a second? I want to make sure that they get a uh, yeah, they get a so, picture of that because I didn't. Yeah, get I, 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 probably the easiest way to go, Brent, with that is just go to the land records page on solutions. Okay, I'm there. And for every yeah, for every solution that you would like to deploy, there we we redo those steps. So for instance, on oh. the yeah, so for like the tax parcel viewer. Um, go to that real quick. There's a getting started guide. For each solution, there's going to be a load your data task. So if you click on that, it's going to step you through exactly what you're going to need to do to load your content in. Um, so that would probably be the best way to go, but it's the getting started, load data on the end of the URL if you want to put that in there, Brent. Yeah, I will put that in there. And you know, different solutions are going to require different layers. So, like the tax parcel viewer requires parcel data and address data. Uh, so, so you, so you can search on the address information, um, and also label it on the screen so you can see like the house number you know, if it's the structure. So, those are the two layers you're going to need to load content into to power that one. For the residential comp finder, it's going to require your sales data, right? So that's the other layer that's going to be required in addition to your parcel data and your address data. What's really nice about all those solutions, though, is they share the same layers. So you don't have to republish them multiple times. One tax parcel layer powers all of these solutions that you saw today. And you can set that up including as a recurring task, so you just do it one time, right? Yep. Okay, well, it looks like we're running out of questions here. I'll give you I'll give just a couple seconds um, to pop one more in while I uh, – uh, Remind everyone, I guess maybe I didn't even mention it to begin with, but we have a quick survey, just a few questions at the end of this. Uh, please fill that out. Those help us, uh, you know, rate ourselves. How did we do? And they also help us uh, direct what future webinars are going to be. Uh, and because yeah, we're here, uh, you know, we're here to provide what information we can to you. So we're not we're not just talking to ourselves. So please fill those out. And uh, with no more questions, I want to thank everybody for their time. Uh, oh, thanks, Nancy. Uh, and and uh, I know everybody's pretty busy. You know, we're kicking off the new year here, and things are going quite uh, quite strong. But I do want to thank you for your time. I want to thank Chris for his time. Uh, lucky to get some of his time to help us out here, and and thank Oscar, who's behind the scenes uh, running all the dials. So, oh, I have one. Can you go back to the site view? Can you go back to the? Um, uh, I think I think she means the site. Um, uh, the equitable property value site. I okay. You yeah, you should be you should be that. seeing that now on the screen. Okay. All right. Now, and I'll try to paste that in again. I'll paste that in the window one more time. And if we, if you don't get this information, uh, again, please. Uh, oh. Go back to the solution site. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, if you don't get this information, you know, bjonesandisri.com, I'll figure out what you need and we'll get it to you. So these are all the solutions for local government. And and I guess I didn't say this either. There's um there's meetups for uh for the local government broad category too, not just our focused area in land records and valuation. So there's uh, there's plenty of meetups, there's plenty of content out there. Uh and if you have a hard time finding any of it, don't hesitate to contact me. But with that, thanks, thanks, Chris. Uh, thanks, Oscar. And look forward to you guys uh, at our next webinar meetup.